Hello, hi, this is Aditya and welcome to Shankam Mark Tech channel. Many of you have asked me to do a separate video on dispatcher configuration and that is why I have come up with this video. If you are liking the videos which I am doing, please hit on that like button and please subscribe to my channel. Let's get started with the presentation. Okay, so before talking anything about the dispatcher, we must first talk about uh, the web server. As I told in my previous video also, whenever the client is requesting, here in this case it is web browser, client is requesting a web page, the request first goes to CDN. CDNs are the content delivery networks which are available worldwide. Initially the content gets cached here and it always tries to serve the content like static HTML pages from the CDN itself. And if CDN cannot serve that particular page, then the request will be passed on to the web server. Okay, here we are talking about Apache web server and all the configuration which I am going to talk about uh, is uh, related to Apache web server only. Like how do you configure dispatcher in Apache web server? That's what we are going to see here. So in the web server, what happens is there will be a daemon process which is running, which is called HTTP. So this HTTPD uh, it will be listening at 8080 port or whatever port which we have configured it to listen on. So what it does is it keeps on monitoring the requests which are coming on to this particular port and whenever the request comes this demand process will process that particular request. And this demand process will use a configuration file which is known as http.config. Okay, so the in the Apache root in the config folder we will find a particular file called HTTP, httpd.config and that is the file wherein all the HTTP configuration for the Apache will be available. Okay, so here the main important thing is the server root uh, which mentions what is the root folder of our Apache instance and then if you see here this is what I'm, I was saying uh, we were asking it to listen we were asking the Apache to listen onto this 8080 port so it starts listening onto this port. So these are called as directives. The word listen, the word server root, these are called as directives as per the language of the Apache web server. Okay, so using these directives, we'll ask Apache web server to keep monitoring on that 8080 web port. So then let's try to understand what is this dispatcher module. As the name suggests, this is a module which is running on the web server, which is here the Apache instance. So this is the AEM dispatcher module, which is available and we will import this module onto this particular web server. And from then on, this dispatcher module will be running as part of this web server. So how do we import this module? So that's what we are going to see here. Okay, so this is again the directive which is load module. So what we are seeing here is we are asking it to load the module which is dispatcher underscore module and we are mentioning the file where the module is available. The code of that particular module is available. So it's just like a hash include uh, in our C program or any import statement in the Java programming language. Okay, it just imports the code available in this particular file and it loads onto this module and it starts executing it. Okay, so this is the first configuration which we have to do as part of this httpd.config for us to be able to in order to load this dispatcher module. Okay, so then second thing which we need to do is to add this directory. Okay, so here what we are doing is we are adding the statement called set handler. Okay, so what this does is it will enable all the requests to pass on to this particular handler. By default, all the requests are handled by the default handler, which is Apache's handler. But what we are saying here is if this module is available, if the dispatcher module is available, instead of uh, we passing the hand, we, instead of we using the default handler, we will, we are going to use uh, this particular dispatcher handler. Okay. So that's what we are going to say here. Okay. So this is another configuration which is important. And this is also part of the httpd.config file. Okay, so then next thing which we'll do is we'll mention what is the location of this dispatcher config. Okay, so the dispatcher also has its own configuration. So in this httpd.config file, we will say what is the location in which the dispatcher configuration is available. Okay, so that whenever the request gets passed on to the dispatcher handler, 
it will refer to that particular dispatcher config and according to that it will do its own processing okay so this this is this code is also part of the httpd.config file and if this module is available then what we are saying is we are giving the location where the dispatcher config is available for example here it is conf slash dispatcher.any okay similarly what is the path of the dispatcher log okay like that we will mention all the configuration paths here okay so now till until here the configuration of the hdpd dot config is done so now let's move on to this dispatcher dot any which is the dispatcher configuration okay so this is how it looks like okay this is the dispatcher config file which is dispatcher dot any in this case okay so first thing which we need to understand is about this slash forms okay so this slash forms is the root of all the configuration whatever configuration which we are doing here right everything must be part of this slash forms okay so this is the first thing which we need to remember so then the next thing is what all could be part of this particular forms okay for example here we are seeing the client headers and virtual host what are the list of the entries which we can have or components which we can have as part of these forms so this screenshot i have got it from the documentation uh, the adobe documentation so the link for which i'll leave it in the description box for any of the configuration it is the detailed and the documentation which you can refer to okay so these are all the entries which are available as part of the slash forms uh, or the components of these forms okay but mainly we are going to see about these things which are highlighted here which is a uh, client headers virtual host session management renders filters vanity urls and cache okay so they, these are the things which we are going to see as part of this video uh, for more other things you can refer to the documentation okay so the first thing which we need to understand is about this renderers okay so let's see about that okay so this is how the renderers configuration would look like again the screenshot is from the documentation okay so the main thing which we need to understand here is we can have multiple renders see the syntax here so we have to put the slash renders here and inside that we need to put a uh, two entries which is my first render my second render this name could be anything basically and this is the uh, parameter or or if you imagine this render to be an array then these are the array elements so that's how you should imagine it okay and uh, here what we are doing is we are just giving the host name and port okay mostly this host name will be our aem publish instances host name okay so ideally what we are trying to do here is whenever the request comes what is the server which will render the code for it what is the publish instance which is rendering the code okay so that is what we are specifying here since we are have specified the two renders here which means that there is a load balancing happening between these two renders okay or these two publish instances so this we have discussed in our previous video also that dispatcher can be used to do the load balancing between multiple publish instances okay so that's how uh, we will use this okay so that's all about renders and now let us see about virtual hosts so let's try to understand this virtual host by taking an example okay so let us suppose we have this host name which is uh, uh, www.mycompany.com okay so this is our host name okay but there is a specific url which is this one slash products url which is mostly loaded okay let us suppose my requirement is to just add additional publish instances only for this particular path and for the rest of all other paths in the website i just want to use another set of publish instances so if this is the configuration which i want to do in that case i use the virtual host okay so how i will do that is i will first declare this forms slash forms and again if this forms is an array then this my products is the first element of the array and my company is the second element of this array okay so now what i am doing is in this particular thing i am declaring the virtual host so virtual host is nothing but what is the incoming url pattern so that pattern is being matched here okay so if the url pattern is mycompany.com then it comes here then the request goes here and it will come to this renderer 
and the request will be served by this particular renderer but if there is a in the you but if the url request is coming like mycompany.com slash products then it goes to here okay and the request will be served by this particular renderer now here i can have multiple renders as we have seen in our previous slide here so i can define multiple renders also here only one render is there but i can also do it like this as a multiple renders okay so if i see that there is a lot of load on this particular slash products url then i can just add one more publish instance here which is one more renderer and there there will be a load balancing which is happening so all the requests incoming requests which are starting with slash products will go into this particular bucket and everything which is my company direct host url will come into this particular bucket like this for each of this uh, path we can define the renderers so this is the main utility of this virtual host which is nothing but it will match what is the incoming url okay so then let's talk about the other ones also very quickly so the other ones are like client headers so all the requests all the http headers like it might be the tokens cookies or any other things right which you want to pass as part of the headers can be passed through okay all the http default uh, headers will automatically get passed through but if you want to define any custom headers then you can allow them as part of these client headers okay or you can disallow them too so what is the exact syntax to it you can refer to the documentation okay and the second thing here is uh, session management virtual host we have already spoken about and this is the session management so let us suppose there is any session which you have to manage for example the user has logged in and we need to maintain the token and we need to expire the token after a certain time so all that session management related activities and configuration we can define it here like where is the location which you need to store the session and how frequently we'll have to inactivate the session and all that uh, configuration which we'll do it as part of the session management okay and the renders part which we have already seen and the third thing is filters filters are like we can allow and disallow certain urls for example if the user is trying to access the crxde path of the publish instance then he should not be allowed to do that right so what are the specific urls for which the user should be allowed to access and what are the other things user should not be allowed to access those urls you can define it here as part of the filters so the exact syntax and definitions you can refer to the documentation again i am just telling the purpose of this particular filter here okay and then coming to the vanity urls so vanity urls are like internal redirects okay uh, let us suppose there is a long url uh, for example content slash uh, uh, and language slash country slash home page slash and then about section a long path right uh, this long path for user to remember it might be very difficult right so what you do is you just keep a simple url saying uh, host name slash about us okay so that user can easily remember it uh, but now if you want to use that particular short url then that short url has to be internally redirected to the long url which is slash content slash uh, country language home about us right so that short url to long url mapping we will do it as part of the vanity urls i have also covered the rewrite rules uh, which are apache rewrite rules uh, also in my previous video okay so both serve the same purpose both apache rewrite rules and vanity urls both of them serve the same purpose but is but it is always uh, preferred to use the apache rewrite rules when compared to vanity urls because we are in more control of what is happening as part of the rewrite rules okay so more about this you can refer to the documentation adobe documentation uh, the link for which i will put it in the description box and the next important thing is the cache okay so as i told in my previous video dispatcher is used for caching the html pages okay where should the location of that cached files be so that you will define it here and how should you and how should we be invalidating those uh, html files and when should we go into dispatcher and when should we go into the publish instance and fetch the latest one all those timestamp and management of the cache 
we can do it in as part of this slash cache settings so this is what i wanted to cover on high level okay so uh, if so there is also another important uh, thing which is about uh, multiple sites okay instead of having here in the virtual host right it is the same host name here right instead of having the same host name we can have the multiple sites also configured as part of the dispatcher so there will be one dispatcher and uh, one dispatcher will serve uh, site a and site b so that kind of configuration also we can do it in the dispatcher config and if you want that also to be covered and if you want any of these ones to be covered in detail please let me know okay and i'll try my level best uh, to do more videos on this if i get some time thank you if you are liking the videos which i am doing please subscribe to my channel